Welcome back to Realism Overhaul, a summary of events which happen live on Twitch, link is below. Today marks the beginning of a new crewed spacecraft program called Aurora. Unlike the Icarus pod which initially intended to be a throwaway program between now defunct primitive space planes and full-on sci-fi shuttles and the like, this new spacecraft has settled in as the primary vehicle for crewed operations for the time being, to and in space. And 9SA has had to cut back on our ambitions, reluctantly concluding the Icarus program will simply have to wait for more tech nodes to unlock. Until then, this new program will see a test flight before crewed operations in orbit actually begin. As of now, Aurora will launch atop a comet launch vehicle. Aurora 1 is an uncrewed, single orbit test flight to ensure all systems operate as intended before we risk the lives of our precious Kerbals. At 50k a pop, we don't really want any more premature retirements, even with our extensive list of viewer submitted applicants. The orbit goes by without incident, propulsion and power working nominally. We're confident in the vehicle at this point. The last thing to test is surviving re-entry. Due to, well, user error, Aurora's recovery module is uncontrollable from the ground without crew, so we have no way to orient our re-entry or deploy the chutes. The test flight will crash into the ocean uncontrollably, but its actual mission remains a success. I'm sure the crew waiting for their own Aurora flight won't mind knowing the test article was obliterated beyond control. Speaking of crew, atop the second launch of an Aurora spacecraft sits Michael, Montgomery, and Werner. For the first crewed flight, we're looking to perform rendezvous, docking, and maneuvering in orbit, similar things to what Icarus Pod has performed during the lunar landing missions. So we're less practicing and more making sure Aurora is able to do the same things without issue, really. Aurora 2's primary objective is to deorbit a piece of hardware that has been in orbit for quite a while, used as a crew module test article for the Lucky 7 mission. That piece of hardware is none other than Outhouse. That's right, we're finally getting rid of it. Outhouse will burn up in the atmosphere and will be no more. And we will never speak of that weird contraption ever again. The docking port on Outhouse is old and not compatible with Aurora's. So we have to include an adapter to use specifically for this mission. Otherwise we'd just end up pushing the thing again, which I'd rather not have to do. So we reach orbit, detach a bit more aggressively than planned, then turn around to grab the adapter from Comet S2, which is currently in a bit of a tumble, but we're no strangers to that now, are we? Now, if you for whatever reason paid close attention to the original outhouse, you'll notice that this craft is in all actuality a replica placed into the correct orbit via the magic superpower of save file editing. The reason for this is Outhouse was placed into orbit before I transferred my install from KSP181 to 110.1, and something about that caused the game to crash every time I got close to it. So this is the only way I'm able to actually deorbit the thing, unlike debris which I've simply been deleting. Which that is something I wish I didn't feel the need to do by the way. I would absolutely love to leave all of my spent stages and space debris floating up there forever until I maybe deal with it. But with Principia and Kerbalism constantly calculating things about every single vessel, it would just wreak havoc on my game to have hundreds of debris at this point. When KSP2 rolls around and we start playing that 24-7, I think we'll basically ban deleting things and hope we don't recreate the movie Gravity, although that would be fun. There we go, Outhouse is destroyed, and Aurora's parachutes worked fine, mission success. I'd say the spacecraft is ready for any and every mission plan we can possibly think of for it. One of the more ambitious missions it will undertake will be an Apollo-style lunar landing, far less sketchy than Lucky 7, and actually sustainable. Just wait until you see the launch vehicle required to pull that off, the biggest thing I've built in Realism Overhaul so far. But we'll get to that in a few videos from now, I'm pretty sure. There's plenty to do in the meantime. Next up, we have the launch of Advent Block A, a crew compartment being lifted ahead of Aurora 3 to complete the first space station contract, keeping a crew of two in low Earth orbit for 30 days.
Now we'll have a size comparison later on to show you just how small this module really is, but it is honestly pretty darn small. It's definitely bigger than Outhouse though, and its modular design should allow it to be just a tiny first piece of what could be a pretty neat space station later on. Individually adjustable solar panels, inventory space for all sorts of storage, propulsion for maneuvering, translation, attitude, and orbital adjustments, it is an all-in-one cramped lifeboat in orbit, and a spacecraft of its own, honestly. Now it's about time we send up the crew that will inhabit this craft for an entire month above the Earth. The Aurora 3 Advent mission is go. We join Aurora 3 already in orbit since I completely forgot to hit the record button until now. Oh well, Aurora 3 has an encounter with Advent now, and all we gotta do is detach from Comet S2 and get ready to put on the brakes when the time comes. We've got some time before they arrive, so let's talk about some of the specifics of the Aurora spacecraft. Firstly, for LEO operation, launching from a Comet A, the spacecraft is severely underfueled due to mass constraints. This doesn't slow us down one bit, however, since a full tank of gas would be entirely overkill for LEO operation. Second, the engine meant for the Aurora is the AJ-10 that was used IRL on Apollo. However, the engine that was installed on Aurora 1, 2, and 3 is actually the Lunar Module Descent Engine instead. We needed some way to get engine data on this engine to increase its reliability before we go ahead and try to land on the moon with it, and this fit the bill quite nicely. Coupled with our Constellation geostationary satellites using the Lunar Module Ascent Engine, we're making our upcoming lunar lander, called Borealis, much more reliable, even before it is flown for the very first time. So back to the mission at hand, we're slowing down our relative velocity to advent, and we'll then prepare to dock with the crew module. Our crew of two has survived their month-long stay in orbit of the Earth, and now make their way to a safe return back home. At the same time, other, arguably more interesting, missions are taking place, but we'll have to talk more about that next episode. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out. Wait.